Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Welcome to Poe on the Call. My name is Chris Rivers. And I'm Mandy Mack. <laughs> yeah, so we are here with the amazing Liz Bronca. I'm so excited. <laughs> I was reading your bio. How are you doing today? I am doing great. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much for... Here. Yes. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> Well, um, I can get started with with a question. Tell us how you got started in poll. Sure. Um, so I, I've been dancing different forms of dance my whole life. And in 2013, I was doing an improv, like a dance improvisation, contact improv collaboration with a with a dancer actually from France. And he had been introduced to pole dancing. He's like, I need to show you this. And he showed me a video of Janine Butterfly, like a comp video of her from way back in the day. And I had no idea what pole dancing could entail in terms of tricks and how, how aerial it was. I just had no exposure. And when I saw that, I was like, wow. Because <laughs> I, you know, from um, you know, in contact improvisation, you do a lot of partnering. There's a lot of inversion work and flying. So I was already into the idea of being disoriented and upside down and and all of that. Um, and I had done a little bit of aerial rope work, um, but at that time it was a lot harder to get access to aerial dance. You know, they weren't really the the circus schools that are around today or pole studios. So, so I saw that video and I thought, is there a pole studio in Boston? And sure enough, there was Boston Pole Fitness, like, you know, in my, sort of in my neighborhood. And I thought, all right, I'm going to go. And I, I really remember it was a huge classic New England snowstorm, nor'easter. I was like soaking wet trudging through the slush <laughs> to my first class. And um, and it was great. And truly, I just never stopped after that. I love that, yes, Boston Pole Fitness. Wow, they fit I, did it, I didn't realize they fit around um, so long. That's amazing. That who, what had been around that long? Boston Pole Fitness. Fitness. Oh, yeah. Fitness. I should I should know that when they were founded, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! They're, they're they're awesome. I love them. Yeah, yeah. that's so funny that like all of the things that you did, like the ropes class and everything, um, it was like a you know the wiggly pole. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. dance class, and then it kind of just led you into pole. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I think, yeah, and I think that's why, you know, for me, pole is always just, is, is another extension just of my love of moving and the sensation yeah. of moving. It just, so to me, it's all like, it's all part of the same world and from the same passion in me. So did, did it come easy for you or was it something that was like, oh, I need to like <laughs> do some work? Yeah, some things were easier than others. Like I think certain aspects about picking up choreography or having a sense of lines, you know, I've had that from other dance training. But a lot of my most recent work was improvisation and like release-based dance. So then it's like squeezing. I don't squeeze. Like the whole point is like to release into gravity. So it there's there was and there still is like a reminder of like, no, you need more attention. Squeeze in more places, push. So so reawakening certain engagements that I had actually spent time getting rid of at one point in my life. And then it's like, nope, now that's that's an essential skill again. That's so interesting. And then I also, um, when you said contact improv, because I often think like when I dance at the pole that I'm dancing with a dance partner, mm. was that, did that really translate? Do you still feel that way? <laughs> it's, it's amazing how, how much I don't 
think about it that way. Ah. You, you, you know, it's, it's kind of funny sometimes how some things overflow and certain things stay more compartmentalized. I don't know why. Um, so I actually don't refer to the pole like as my partner much. Not never, but not much. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I should start thinking about that <laughs> a little no. bit more. <laughs> or maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> My partner. Whatever works, whatever works. <laughs> I find sometimes that helps with like my choreo class like think of it as a partner like you're just mm-hmm. dancing with someone else until you get to the floor then you're showing them up <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yes <laughs> right and you know they'll always be there that's right <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well and you also mentioned in um, your bio that you were a uh, Pilates instructor. You had, did you have a Pilates studio? Do you want to talk yeah. About that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Cause it's interesting to look at my different careers. It's like, so what, <laughs> what's up with this person? <laughs> but I, um, so I originally went to school for physical therapy and was practicing in hospitals and doing that full time. And that was really limiting my dancing. Um, and, and even though I pursued a degree in physical therapy, my heart was always in dance. So that's always actually been the most important thing <laughs> to me. So, so I had an opportunity to kind of go into part-time PT and, instead of full-time to dance more. So I did that. And then um, there were some certain situations in my life and I thought I was going to move to Europe. And... And I wouldn't be able to practice PT there, but I would be able to do Pilates. So I kind of started switching my focus and my training towards becoming a Pilates instructor to have international possibilities. And then there was like a little time lag. So I decided, well, I'll let me see what it's like to have a studio because I had been working in other people's studios and probably many of us get a little curious about, well, what it was be like, if it was my studio. <laughs> so I, and I thought, okay, I'm going to be moving. So it's kind of like an experiment. So I opened up a, like what, what I called a boutique studio. It was just one room, one, one chair, one reformer with a tower. So for those of you who are, who are familiar with that. So it's just for seeing clients one at a time meant to last about a year or so. And then, then things happened. <laughs> And I didn't move to Europe and my studio was doing well. So I ended up um, running my own studio for about 12 years. And then I really had a lot of time to dance, which was awesome. So, yeah, that kind of that was like next phase of my career. That's so amazing that 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 happened. (laughs) Yeah, it was totally, totally wild. And I feel like, yeah, a lot of things in, in my life have been like, I didn't expect this. And then it was like an unanticipated beginning of like a decade of focus and and work and whatever. So, yeah. That's amazing. I know in our studio too, we're always looking for like a Pilates instructor because Pilates is so amazing for our bodies, especially as pole dancers. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So maybe, maybe you should come and teach us a workshop. Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was reading through the thing. It's like, do you travel to teach? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'd love to do that. At one point, I was like jokingly like, well, what if there was something like pole lattes, you know, where where you're integrating Pilates and Poland. Nobody steal my yeah. idea for saying that. <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's just all do it. I love it. So, I would definitely be there. Let please do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, how um, when you got into pole, how long was it before you decided you wanted to be a teacher? Hmm. I think it was definitely a couple of years, um, and I knew that I wanted to. If I did teach, that I wanted to focus on heels dancing. Um, and stilettos and and choreography because that's I felt like I'm I'm pretty uh, 
I have kind of strong beliefs about what kind of experience level you should have before you teach. So I felt that's something that all my dance training and my other body training, I feel like I could safely, confidently offer a level of of expertise to teach that where teaching a, a more um, trick based class was like it didn't feel appropriate at that time. Um, so it was a couple of years and I think, you know, I think like many of us, it kind of starts because there's an opportunity. Um, there needs a sub. There's a need for a teacher. And you're like, yeah, I'm kind of on the brink and, and here's my moment. And then you level up. I don't, I don't think that's an uncommon story. So it kind of started like that. And then I, I love, I love teaching and I love teaching teachers and I love learning how people train teachers. So then I, that got me curious about the elevated trainings. And so, you know, once I did that, um, I was incredibly impressed with how comprehensive and the quality of training I got from my first, um, elevated pole teacher instructor level one class. So then I was like, well, now it's just a matter of time before I just do all of it. <laughs> and that's kind of over the course of the years, that's, that's kind of what has happened. Okay, that's so awesome. I also I took the elevated training and I loved it and it was addicted to it. I took all three. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You're like, so are you going to make another one? <laughs> right like is there a level two flex <laughs> exactly exactly where is it <laughs> yeah or I was like or how about a spin pole because I you know I feel like there's there's so much because spin is not my specialty yeah, that I'm, yeah. I'm hungry for more like break it down I can't you know it's not easy for me to just translate things onto spin I feel like I want to know the theory yeah, there's definitely, oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> right. I think, um, Chris, does an expert have a, a good spin, spin pull cert? They do. I'm thinking about taking that one in the near future. <laughs> and it's, it's really good, yes, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard a lot of good things about the expert training. But back to your training so, <laughs> so when you um so the interesting thing about about you is like um you teach at, at boston pole fitness but you yeah. also teach at boston university yes. can, you, can you tell us how you started the, you says you started the pole department right yeah so i should, <laughs> I should clarify because i think when people hear about pole at a university they're like what you, you're a professor of pole dance and it's yes. like that would be awesome but I gotta be honest <laughs> I'm an instructor <laughs> I'm not quite the professor of pole dance yet um but so um Boston University I have I, I actually went to BU undergrad and for my graduate work and I have taught an, a dance improvisation class there for many years so I had a long history with the dance department at BU and then I started getting into pole. And then some students at BU were asking for a pole class. And, you know, four or five years ago, that was a little bit like, what do you mean pole class at Boston University? You know, but then, as we know, it's been a pretty rapid, well, I think things have changed a lot in terms of ideas about pole and accessibility to pole tra training and um and so I, I do think that it was helpful that I had a long standing relationship with the dance program. And so that it was kind of easy for me. It was much easier, in my opinion, to, for me to be the one to sort of bring that in and, and know that I might have to navigate a lot of things with, with introducing the dance form, um, how to teach it, how to how to promote it and, and all of that. So, yeah, I could say a lot about it, but you might have, you might have specific questions that I'm happy right? to. I, I'm like, I want to know <laughs> because it, I think it's so cool that, um, you know, that <laughs> you snuck in because, because they loved you already. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was this, it was this combination of the students are interested. There's a known qualified instructor and, 
and the the director of the dance program there I we have a long term relationship and I think that she trust she knew that she could trust me um, as a professional to 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 teach well but also to teach for the environment that I was in yeah um, and from you know for me at that point bringing Cole into new to the public into new arenas um, was I have to say, I think it was more important to me then than it is now. And I can say more about that perhaps. But um, so at that point, it was kind of like, there's no way I'm not going to make, if there's a chance for this to happen, there's no way I'm not doing this. And so therefore it was like, so you're going to set up and take down stages every time you teach. (laughs) And you're going to navigate how to have a group class with three or four poles. And so there was a lot of um, specifics that I had to work with to make it happen. So you were literally taking down and putting up and you're still, are you still doing that? Wow, that's so amazing. Sadly, no matter how many students love pole, there there will not be a room. They won't put them up. Designated. It's just it's a it's a hard thing to understand how a a gigantic university. And I don't want to I won't I don't want to get too much into like those details, but it can be hard to imagine how can there not be space. Yeah. Yeah. there's just so much, so many wonderful things to offer that there's always a competition because we all have like great ideas for things. So yeah, unless someone <laughs> decides earmarks, this donation is to build a pole studio. At the university. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could do like a pole a <laughs> yeah. You still do that for your students. That is like true love and dedication though. Yeah, and they're, you know, they're amazing too. Like, you know, they're, they, if, if I need help, they're always willing to help in ways. So like that, that it, um, but I think that also speaks to something that happens really rapidly in whole is the development of community. Like, yeah, yeah. I think it happens so fast and, and, it, and then it fosters sometimes having to do things like, why are any of us lugging X stages anywhere ever? <laughs> Right. It's because we love it. We love pole. And so we're going to lug hundreds of pounds of metal so we can dance. <laughs> I was going to say, though, that really sets a really good example for your pole students, seeing you having being that dedicated to spreading the love and joy of pole dance um, when you have the opportunity to do it no matter what. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> man but maybe someone who's listening will be like hey let's make them a pole for <laughs> <laughs> so at least have like the room those removable poles I've yeah. never seen them work but I know that they exist yeah I know and it's one of those things too like you do, you develop what you like I I feel really sick poles I trust yeah, yeah you know what I mean it's nice to know like there's you're not worried about anything mm-hmm. like I were because I I I personally haven't used the ones that you put floor to ceiling um mm-hmm. of any brand and so for me I'd be like hmm, okay I kind of want to explore this a lot before I propose this you know that makes sense for sure yeah safety <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm big <laughs> on that <laughs> Can't wait to see how many people you inspire to start polling their colleges. That would be beautiful. Yeah, I think that I don't know the percentage, but I know that there's schools that have poll clubs. Oh. Wow. Which is the students, the students are taking the responsibility. I don't know who finds the actual polls or so I have never really explored that. Um and what, You're right, like, actually. Yeah, yeah, there was um, Smith College. They had a, a pole club that came to our studio uh, a few times during the last summer, I think it was. But you're right, there are some some pole clubs. That would be so amazing for like to to develop it into like the dance program or like the athletic program <laughs> at uh, schools. Yeah, especially if it's going to be an Olympic sport soon. 
What, is, that, is that moving along? I don't know. I I saw skateboarding was in there now, so maybe things are happening. I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I remember like that. Whatever the elementary, like the first step, whatever whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> and then I did, and then I feel like then I heard nothing. Yeah, yes. yeah. I think the first. Oh wait, I could, I. I mean, not on me. I think the first step was like making it an official sport, which they did. So now pools recognize oh. as a sport, and now they're trying oh. to push that it really is like Olympic worthy. Like it's challenging. It's like gymnastics. I really hope it works. <laughs> I'm just, we'll see what happens. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be so amazing. But when you, um, so do, did you receive like backlash from others at like on faculty or like from students wow. who maybe weren't ready for, for poll? Every, it's, this is a really interesting, I have never heard anything negative from students or even, even, I wouldn't even say apprehensive. Usually they're pretty clear, want to do this, you know, and not, not not feeling judgment of like, why do we have this here or anything like that? I feel like there was a lot of navigation in terms of what to, how things are written, how they're described, what, what is the class, the class is called pole dance circuit for, for a variety of reasons. Um, And then there was like, I think, I do think we did an interview, like there had been some press in the beginning and, you know, I had to be wise and thoughtful about how, what I was representing and how I was navigating that situation. Um, And I, I, I mean, it's, it's more accepted now, but I think it still depends on who you're, who you're talking to about. And I think I'm going to generalize, I'm going to do it. Maybe depending on what generation you're in <laughs> and your exposure to poll, you might have different feelings or awarenesses about about old dance and fitness and whatever we want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I'm so glad that you said that you didn't get any like, you know, any backlash from anyone and they, they were just like really for it because that makes me feel really good about the future of pull and like you said like maybe it's the older generations that don't really understand what we're doing and maybe they'll <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember who, I'm trying to remember who I was so I was talking to someone about about oh I, I know I was, I was doing a performance and I, I knew I was not going to kill it let's just say I had you know the amount I'd been training the amount of time I was going to have in the space blah 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 and I was like feeling like should I even you know why am I even doing this and and the person pointed out like probably there's a bunch of people who have never seen pole dance in real life so if nothing else you're letting these people see like this is pole it's not just that person in the back of a strip bar in a movie you know, and so so that was a really good moment of like, oh yeah, you know, sometimes you're not, it's not just me showing off my me. You know what I mean? It's like I'm trying to represent and and educate. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a larger thing than just like how you were feeling at that moment. You yeah. needed to do it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> for the greater good. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love it. Well, we we met. Um, at a performance, <laughs> we were performing um, on a stage pole, <laughs> and it, it was at Pride, right? Yeah, in Worcester. <laughs> yes. wow. I took a bus. I'm like, where the hell am I? Okay, I think the bar's over there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so much fun, and you were you were amazing and inspiring then. And I've been following you on Facebook, <laughs> everything since then. And, um, but you do a lot of performances. Do you want to talk to us about performing and, and how that is? Sure. Like primarily pole. I mean, I think pole, I think pole is my primary performance mode at this time. Um, so that, that time of pride in Worcester was my first pole performance. 
Um, and then I think maybe the year after, um, do you, I don't know if you know Machine Nightclub doesn't doesn't exist anymore, but it was a big Boston, um, I'd say known as a, as a gay nightclub on kind of underground scene and um, but very, very popular in certain communities. So they have they were one of the clubs that had poles. And it wasn't a strip club and regularly had people on them and go-go dancers and pole dancers on them, like on the regular every weekend. And, and so I was fortunate to be invited to be like an additional dancer for a pride celebration. And, and, and it went well. And then it was my fortune that someone else was moving on to another phase in their life and they were looking for a dancer and so then it, I had this once a month gig dancing at machine and then you meet other people. So then I had it two nights a week <laughs> or two nights a month, two, two Saturdays a month dancing there. And so I, I think it was like four or five years that I did that. Um, so a ton of my performance was, was just like polling and go going freestyle like just freestyling on Saturday night so I, I and I did a lot of that and there were themed nights so you really got into developing your costumes and that that whole thing so oh, yes. for, no I remember oh, seeing all your good. costumes there yeah so I posted many. everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I love that it's so sad they don't I don't I feel like they don't have many things like that in the area like used to and I feel like I missed out on so much of it right me too I know it was like the one of the last and, and sadly that club is gone that was really one of I think one of the last places around here that's too bad because it sounds like so much fun and it looked like you were having so much fun <laughs> yeah it, it was really a blast uh, I love that Right, and to have like a job as a pole dancer like that too is so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was it was great. Yeah, I think maybe <laughs> the, the only other place is like maybe House of Yes. Now they think about it, um, and they're in New York, mm -hmm. but I don't know of any other place that has like just pole dancers. Yeah, it's time to revive. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Revolutionize. Oh, well, Are you well, still do you... performing or competing? Um, so, so let's see. So then, so then was the pandemic. <laughs> Not, nothing, no performances happened. And then actually this... Um, this, I guess it was, yeah, it was June. I had my first whole performance since the pandemic and it was part of um this weekend long celebration called stones to rainbows it was a queer cabaret with all different artists musicians actors dancers um and another pole dancer and i each did solos in that so it was like okay i'm, I'm still a performer so it was great to get back on on stage um in that way but felt you know felt very different because it wasn't quite a proscenium stage, but it wasn't the club. So it's, you know, really interesting to, to do pole in those different settings. Um, I think I love, I think I like the club setting because <laughs> I love the freestyle. So that goes very well together. Right. Yeah. I think we were talking before about like um, performers and how like freestyle is just like the jam. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss but, my club face. <laughs> <laughs> but you you are competing um, at PSO Northeast. <laughs> Yay, my first PSO my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. So excited. But are you doing freestyle or are you doing choreography? You no, know, I've I turned out I'm gonna do um down to flow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that I can keep, you know, keep my emphasis on performance and artistry and, and the quality of movement um, as opposed to tricks. But there's the opportunity to work in that way, too, which I wanted to do because, I, feel, you know, I feel like we also get in our grooves and, and sometimes we just stay there. So I'm, I'm really liking the opportunity of like, no, these, you're going to keep working these tricks, 
you're going to master these. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm psyched. It's a bit of a different journey for me now, but I'm totally into it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I was so excited to hear that you were going to compete. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. It's a big. We'll get to, I'll get to meet you in person. I'm excited. So awesome. So you're both, you're both competing? Oh, yeah. I signed up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, it's going to be so fun. Yes. Definitely right. We have to always remember that it is fun. <laughs> Especially like two weeks up, before. <laughs> and I love how you bring up that you're working on master the tricks you already have. I think that's been something many callers have been talking about rather than let's do a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely, you know, I would say that I can't do most of my tricks right now. <laughs> So I can't say that I really stuck to these are the things I can do and now I'm just going to master them. But I feel like um, what what has been chosen are things that are part of sort of play into my strengths. So in that in that sense, it's about like digging deeper into what you have, developing new skills, but digging deeper into what what you're working with, you know, because I think you can't or it's a, the idea is not to try to become someone you're not in my opinion it's like to become and my my goal and I have to write about the stuff is like to to give the best version of myself to be my my best pole dancing self not compared with anybody else so Love that. That's so important to to remember always when you're on stage or even like in the classroom. Too. Yeah. Uh, how would you? I, um, <laughs> I was going to say I loved hearing that um, because I think this year I really wish I heard that earlier. Just like <laughs> continue to be you and um, grow creatively and like just express yourself rather than be someone else. I think last year when I did PSO, I was trying to be someone else for my first time. And then now this year, I'm learning what you just said and I'm excited. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's a, I think it's a constant, I think it's a constant, constant challenge though to keep regrounding and like, this is me, this is my journey. I'm exactly where I should be. Like, I don't think, I think it's a constant process. Mm -hmm. Right, you're always like, should I do the bird of paradise? Everyone else is doing the bird of paradise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> right, right. I want to be like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, how do you, so how do you choreograph? Like, what is your choreographic process? So, um, so I could speak, so in my, so I teach a heels class and that's a choreo class. So I would say that is more, if I speak about that, that's more reflective because for this competition, I'm working um, with a coach. So it's a very different process. And I'm still like, like every time, I'm like, what is the process? So, so, but my pre-existing, my choreographic process for just like, if I'm making a combo for class or something, um, is, is again, it's really a lot of freestyle. It's finding a song that I think I want, putting on the video camera, dancing, seeing like, well, what what's feeling interesting to me? What's looking good? And just a lot of um, freestyling, watching, setting choreography. Pretty much that over and over again. <laughs> okay, so it's really like driven by the melody rather than the movements you want you like yeah. pre-plan or anything yeah oh. I mean every, every now and then I'll be like oh we don't I mean I'm doing a lot of this and not enough of that and then I'll think well you maybe put in some more spins you're always on the floor or or something you know something like that so sometimes there'll be one or two moves that I, I want to put in there or you know or of course we all I think we all watch other dancers and you might see something in someone's choreography and you're like oh what's that and then usually when you put it on your body, something else happens. 
Yeah. And so sometimes it's like that. I saw that thing was kind of cool. And then what happens when I do it? And what happens when I do it to this song? Um, so I say yeah. I have a very like that kind of improvisational, like play, play around. Nice. And then see what sticks. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I, I also like that you said that you have a coach that you're working with for uh, the competition, because I think that is really important, uh, especially like to keep you on track. Um, the, the one time that I used the coach, it was the most successful time. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm thinking now, perhaps I need to find a coach. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's just, I think because I've never, it's a different thing to think about a dance for competition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like since, because I, I, I don't know if I've been resistant, but I've been not interested all these years <laughs> to, to compete. And so I feel like, well, now that I have decided that I want to do this, I kind of want to get deep into it and see what it's really about and not necessarily do a competition like it's a perform, like it's one of my other performances. I want to know the difference. Um, so I'm kind of going all in. <laughs> It would be this <laughs> experience. No, that's such a good idea. It's, you know, because then you'll be prepared for everything and then your coach will be ready for any, like, ah, that happened. <laughs> and, yes. kind of thing. and then they'll have a plan for, for your routine, too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I need I a think, coach. I think, you know, I think it's a good, I'm all for, chat, like, challenging yourself to do something that's kind of different than your usual thing even if it means you go back to your usual way after there's no way you won't see things differently yeah and also too sometimes other people are better at seeing like the things that could come from like your your movement patterns Mm -hmm. and and sometimes we can't see those things (laughs) so it's good to have that other eye yeah well, I'm so excited. Do you want to reveal any other things about your routine or do you want to keep them all secret? <laughs> um, what can I reveal? I don't know. It's, it's mysterious to me, you know? <laughs> no, it's right, it's still so early. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be like, you know, it's down to flow. So there's going to be, of course, it's going to be the whole sexy vibe. But actually, I, I want it to be a bit more of like a mis- mystical or supernatural sexy. So not like I'm your classic pole dancer, but like what is like, it sounds very philosophical, maybe ridiculous, but like, to think like what is the essence of sexy or like the archetype of sexy and sensual, like maybe beyond the 21st century, you know, like what is, what is sort of that universal or multiversal. <laughs> this sounds so epic. So I know it sounds nuts. So I don't know if that's going to translate on stage, but but I'm yeah, kind of thinking thinking in that in that way. Love it. That sounds so amazing. <laughs> we'll like, see. Right. I can't wait to. I'll keep checking in with you, and we'll keep on checking how we are. Yeah, yeah, I can't, and I can't wait. What are you? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I I first was in low flow floor work, but then I decided that I might want to climb yeah. and just spin and have a good time. So I switched it to RX, um, which was formerly Russian exotic. Oh, okay, <laughs> yes. Okay. Cool. Fine. Yeah. So yeah. I'm hoping for that. I finally found a song. So. <laughs> that's, so yeah. that's it that's all I got I love it Chris what are you do you know what you're I do um, I am going to do level 4 entertainment um, yeah. I am super excited um, I hear like entertainment is like, supposed to be kind of funny or whatever just like entertaining right so I have something really excited and fun planned it's gonna I don't want to relieve too much, but it's pretty much um, starting with a male who wants to be masculine, but realizes that's just not him. And he goes on a journey to find his femininity. 
Nice. Nice. I can't wait. I'm just going to want to sit in the audience and not be stressed out about my routine. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Hopefully we'll, we'll all get a chance to like sit and, and watch each other. Yeah. I but know. if not, definitely get the video. <laughs> yes. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Get the this video. year I'm definitely getting the video. My only regret from last year. Not getting it. <laughs> uh, you didn't get the video? No. No, because I figured everybody else is going to record it. And they all did, but I to no notice the difference. <laughs> ah, yeah, the video is always good. <laughs> well, for this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Liz, do you have any advice for beginner pollers? I would say to feel confident taking your time go at your own pace. Um, um, I really think learning good good form is really important. So I think take like, even if you're excited about stuff, try to have patience with the basics, mastering the basics, doing them on both sides for real, really do it on both sides. <laughs> um, and I think just to like also start respecting your, personal preferences and strengths right like right from the beginning um because i i i often tell my beginners like pole it, it's a great community but it's often you're on stage with you and the pole it's 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 so you really have the space to do it your way and make it yours it's a solo it's a solo form so that gives you a lot of freedom so i think right from the beginning developing that that's like that mindset as part as you develop your physical skills, you're also developing that approach. I, I love that you say that too, especially um, as I wanted to ask you like as a heels instructor too, for beginners who are maybe hesitant to start heels, what, what do you say to them? <laughs> so I think if people, if people like don't want to wear shoes, um, I'm fine with that. I'm like, just wear what, what you need to feel safe. You know, if you want to be there for, if you want to be in socks and just be up on, you know, up on your toes to do, to do the movements, like that's up to you. Or if you, I mean, there can be so many reasons why people are wearing or not wearing what they're wearing, whether they have their pleasers or not, whether they're wearing different heels, whether they're not wearing heels. So, um, I try as long as it's safe to let people like do what you want. And I, and I think sometimes people then start saying, well, if I don't wear heels, I can't do the clacks and I want to do the clacks or I can't do the, you start to see maybe how the heels will actually help you. And, and so, you know, maybe people have their own timeline to, to getting into them, but I, I, I never, tell people what to wear or not wear on their feet like unless I think it's safety because sometimes if we're if we never dance in heels we don't understand those straps aren't going to hold and and you're probably going to get hurt and or break your shoes and you probably don't want it we don't want to do either thing um yeah I mean I had a I had an old pair of boots it's like times if you have old pairs of shoes to hand down to people who like might not want to commit to buying shoes but want to try it. I think it's awesome if if there's any any ability for students to just try try some and see what it's like. I agree. I love that. It's so scary to try heels, especially as a male. I was so scared. So people need to hear that that you don't have to necessarily wear the heels the first time. You can just work your way into it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and get the movements down and feel safe and comfortable in the movements. But then, like, yeah, there's most, I think most people, like, deep down, they're like, I want to wear them right now, and I'm so scared, and I need my own invitation to wear them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, it's funny, I don't, I wish I could remember the moment that I just, what was the moment that made me on that day buy heels? I can't, and I, sadly, I can't remember that turning point but I, what's a funny story is there was a little period where I was doing tango 
And I swear I was half doing it for the shoes. <laughs> and then when I saw pole shoes, I'm like, oh, that those shoes are nothing <laughs> compared to what you can wear, what you can wear when it comes to pleasers and platforms and stilettos. So <laughs> you're like, Liz, what brought you to pole? And you were like, the shoes. <laughs> Man, if I had seen the shoes before I saw the tricks, I might, I mean, that might have done it for me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that might have yeah, been why. That was one thing with PSO. I was like, the only thing I know is I'm not going on that stage without heels on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you have like a, um, a learning period of like wearing the heels? Cause I remember I did. It was like, Maybe about like a year before it felt like I could like walk. <laughs> yeah, um, pro- probably. And I, I, but I actually feel like it's funny. In the last year or so, I've realized like there's ways that I want to use my feet and my heat. Like it's like I saw I saw something about the way I was using them differently. So in some ways, I feel like I'm on another learning curve now which is which is interesting I think before I was maybe it was like keep your balance point your toes straighten your knees but now it's like well how I want to be way up on that toe box like all the time if I can unless I'm doing a thing on my feet you know so there's this like an, almost a new aesthetic that has that I'm like oh now I, I want to do that right now everyone's like floating and doing all the edge work which mm-hmm. I can't figure out. My ankles will not <laughs> let me do the edge work. But I think the aesthetic of it is so cool. Have you tried any of that? <laughs> not not so much. I mean, every now and then, I, there, you know, so, something will come out just because you saw it and it's somewhere mm-hmm. in your brain and you just do it. Um, and it, this isn't something that I've noticed come up for me in different different aspects of pole dance you know, in, in other bal- in other dance training, you're taught, don't sickle your feet. There's all these, all these things that you shouldn't do, right. Or you're trained not to do with your feet because it's bad or it's not pleasing, la la la. And it's funny to sometimes discover that there's some, there's still some residue of that in, in me. So sometimes there's foot things that even though I can like it on someone else, it's like, nah, I just, my ankles, my ankles aren't going to do that. I feel like I'm not flexing my foot. Yeah. Or, or, you, know, or you know, I just think that things have to come for me from an, from an, from an authentic place. So unless somehow it really feels like it's time for me to do that, I probably won't just cause I saw it, especially when it's like a real stylized detail. I feel like that stuff, should just kind of come out or I like to let it just come out naturally almost without thinking. Same. Yeah. Right. Like um, it would definitely be, I mean, I come from a dance background too and I find that it's, it's hard and it's going to be really something that I would have to dedicate myself to if I want to like flex. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But it is beautiful. And for people who do it, it's like so cool looking. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's go- it's gorgeous. I can't even imagine the arm strength too. Like, <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, what are your your plans for the future in in pole? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, keep. I mean, keep, it's base. It's kind of basic. Keep pole dancing. Like, don't stop. And I feel like that's something, it sounds so simplistic, but it's something that with my other dancing, you know, when, when going to college or when graduating from college, there's there's times where you could easily switch your track and, and stop dancing or barely dance. Um, and and then it, so it's that just pure commitment to con- keep doing the form. And then from there, things happen. And I don't, you know, I don't really, I have no idea what will happen. I don't, I don't have like a, I don't have a specific goal, but I don't think I got the places I did in life because it was my goal. 
you know, it's kind of like I do what I love and I try to do it well. And when opportunities come up, I try to take them. And so I think I'm just going to keep doing that. <laughs> and I thought we, yeah, we were talking about um, like yesterday about um, what we're happiest working toward a goal. But that's funny that you have a different perspective that you just had, you know, the um, the term pull. <laughs> and then whatever goal comes out of it is whatever it is. Yeah, and, and the, I think the goals can really can really change at different times and just being kind of fluid with that and how, you know, what, when you have more time to train, certain goals are exciting and satisfying and then certain goals can be really not exciting if you feel like I don't really have the time to train or the energy to train properly. That goal is now a bummer instead mm -hmm. of instead of like a light at the end, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I do think, I do think this competition process is going to shift something and I don't even know how, mm -hmm. I feel certain. That's so <laughs> cool. You're like, I feel drawn to this competition for whatever reason. I know I'm going to grow from it. I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, you know yeah. why though? It's probably because you're gonna win, and then you're gonna <laughs> go off and like do this huge pole star. <laughs> Train others to compete, start your own competition coaching program. I see it. I see oh my it. gosh, you can go on tour and like start college pole dance departments. Like that's, that's right. <laughs> PhD in pole. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's it. <laughs> Except I'm so like, I'm so about like your own pathway and your own thing that it's like that and curriculum. How do we, how do we put those two things <laughs> together? Somehow it's a puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think um, that was all the, the questions that I, I had for you, Liz. Awesome. I have one. Um, what is your, I guess, your favorite pole tricks, and what was your pole nemesis or your trick that you hated trying to learn? So I thought I thought I was thinking about that question, and I I I don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite trick, um, but I would say something that's so basic, but I feel like it's one of the things that I do all the time, and I feel like a fan kick. <laughs> I like you can fan it to sit, you can fan to a split, you can be up in the air and fan into something. Uh, but to me, you can stand in your floor work. So it's not a thrilling trick, but I feel like it can lead you so many places. And it's something that you can probably get early on and you can make a lot of flair with it if you want to. Um, so that's not a very thrilling <laughs> answer, but that's my answer. Hey, it is a very versatile trick. It's one of my favorites to teach because it's so versatile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, I'm a fan of the fan kick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're a fan of the fan kick? <laughs> yeah, that's one of the dumb jokes I always say in class. <laughs> Oh my god, everyone, I'm such a fan of these fan kicks. <laughs> now, now I'm gonna start saying that. Right, you can't not now. Right. So dumb. <laughs> I I do love fan kicks though. <laughs> my nemesis, I think I have to say my nemesis. I'm gonna say this is my nemesis trick because I actually said something like that to someone yesterday who was posting it. And I think it's called, is it like a suicide spin? where you or like you it's got another name where you hook basically you hook one leg and you basically just dive forward on the spin pole and I don't know what its proper name is and I know what it is now yeah your arch and your head is going to potentially head right down there and you're not you don't use your arms ideally from the get-go and I'm like no <laughs> never and it's like one of those tricks is probably like within the realm of possibility except never psychologically 
Oh my gosh, I forgot about that one because I wrote it out of my existence. <laughs> That's something that I want to do. <laughs> No, I told someone, the person who posted it last night, I was like, that's my nemesis trick. And I was like, I feel like I'm going to leave my two front teeth in the floor. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a Marley though, right? It's like yeah, a exactly. Marley, but like. But you but just <laughs> whoop from standing, you just go. Unnecessarily dangerous. Yeah. And of course, like when you pan, like for me, when I panic, I flex. Which yeah, is exactly gonna... what will make you knock your teeth out. <laughs> so that's I'm gonna have to see this trick. I, I can't get it in my head. I get the Marley and I'm getting what you're saying of how you dive into it, but I wanna okay. see it. <laughs> I feel like you would kill this trick. I feel like you would love it. I love it. It's I love like, it's like one that everyone will be like <gasps> But then you'll be like, huh. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. What is, you said it's like a suicide um, spin? I called it a suicide spin. I forget what I remember. I'll send you the, I can share, probably share what I share with you when we get on this call. <laughs> a <laughs> lot it's of like my favorite. Like Marley. Okay. But done from standing. Okay. I just feel like your head goes towards the ground quickly. Yeah. Okay. You're, like in a, you're like in a Cupid. And then yeah. you go forward. Yeah. And if you keep your extension and your knee hook, like, you're good. But then if you freak out. Right? Like, if you squeeze your yeah. butt, you should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, you'll really be bad. fine. Just squeeze your butt and go for it. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I'm going to have to Oh, my gosh. I love it. <laughs> um, oh, there was... Uh, do we ask about the hand grip? What kind of we have not. <laughs> um, so grip. So that's another not. I never have a straightforward answer for anything. Um, when, <laughs> in the right weather, and if I'm training enough, I don't actually. Often I don't use grip. Um, but but that's because I tend to have dry skin and be really dry. So a little bit of moisture actually, I'm way better off. So like pulling in the heat I'm all about that um because I need that little little extra um but otherwise I would say like for hands dry hands like I would never want to have to pull without having dry hands nearby if I wanted it so that's my that's my staple and then I tried like I just tried that grip and glow like pole junkie was just showing this it's like a more hydrating grip um if you, but that's for like my my kind of situation, and it was pretty. It was decent. Um, Does it? Is it? Um, it's called grip and glow. Does it also grip and like glow have it has like a little sheen to it or something? And it, but it doesn't make you slippery. So whatever it's made out of, the, that's the point. That it's a little bit hydrating, but it won't make you slip. Uh, that would be pretty for like competition if you wanted to like shine a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the glitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how much it's actually making me glow, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so gosh. Sometimes you tap for certain, you know, certain locations for certain moves. Like if you need just a little extra. Yeah, yeah. Stick, but oh only very specifically. I wondered if I would ever meet someone who was like, oh, I don't use grip. And here you are. <laughs> I can't say never. I can't say I'd want to go polling with no grip. But I don't tend to use a ton of it. Ah, that's so amazing. Maybe, ask me at the competition. In the next couple of months, I might become the queen of grip. <laughs> like all these bottles coming in with them. Uh. <laughs> I feel like it's a nervous habit for competition. Like I used my whole bottle and I really didn't even need it. It was just a comfort right? thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's layer number one, then <laughs> layer number two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I guess um, back to the competitions, I, we didn't ask about um, like your training uh, schedule like how are you handling your training you're working with uh, a coach but mm -hmm. are you doing like are you doing Pilates one day are you doing uh, how do you do you rest <laughs> yeah yeah so um so 
so, you know, I would say this week is the first week that I'm actually working on specific moves that are in the combo, which is like, so, and I are, and like, I was like, oh, my biceps, you know? So I realized, okay, I'm going to, until they're used to what I'm trying to do, then, you know, I need, I shouldn't train those tricks two days in a row, you know? So that would be like giving me rest days from those tricks. Um, But it might mean that, okay, some of the other tricks use really different muscles. So then I could train back to back days. Um, But I guess, I guess what I'm hoping for is like, you know, three days of working the combo and the tricks and then um, flex. I really need to do a lot of flexibility training. It's not my natural that's that's where I'm. I tend to be more strong than flexible. Yet everything is better when I stretch more. Like I'm in less pain. I even feel like I I strain less on the pole. So I'm actually trying to do more of that. And during the pandemic, I started taking class with Donna Carno online. Well, you know she's your pal, and so that's been immensely helpful to have to do a you know a 75 minute back bending class or 75 middle splits class. So I'm definitely trying to work that in at least once a week. Um, I didn't know she did that online. I'm going to have to sign up one day with you. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. That too. <laughs> it's awesome. And then if you, if you take the class, you get the recording. So then you oh, now it's like, I have my back bending class. I have my middle splits class, and then it's up, it's up to me to discipline myself, <laughs> right? You, you, <laughs> you, might be, you might see me in there soon. I did not know that. Thank you. For that. <laughs> so right now, it's on Sundays, ah. um, but that's so that's been awesome, and I think that, and then you know, then you've got to you have to have at least one rest day. You know, you can go for a walk or go for a swim, but I think you really, I think your body really needs that. That sounds like a perfect training schedule. So we'll see if I actually do it. (laughs) (laughs) That's the intention. Because it's hard to also, you know, right now, the studio's adding more PSO practice slots. But, you know, in the beginning, it's like, when is there studio space and how does that gel with my schedule and will I still have energy? Like when those two things align, is that the worst time for me to train? You know, yeah. so um, <laughs> they feel, they're just working working through that. Mm. Yeah, Right, I had to, um, there was a lot of people who had to remind me that like last time I was training for competition, it was like, you know, you're training for the competition, you're teaching classes, you're running the studio. <laughs> like it's a lot, like, and, but if you can find the balance, like you can make it work out. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's going to be a little bit tricky to figure out. Yeah, all of those things, like the day that you mm. that I teach it, the whole stuff at BU, it's like, well, that's not training and it's not resting. So, yeah, what is that? You know. Yeah, and then there comes a point. Um, I don't know for me where I'm not able to like choreograph for my students anymore. <laughs> like mm-hmm. there's too much choreo in my head that I can't possibly fit anything else. Yeah. So I'll like redo old choreos for my students toward the competition starting time. That's great. <laughs> Cause I don't do that. And I'm like, why not? Those were fun. So yeah. Good songs. Let's do that. <laughs> yes. And now I can like break. I don't know. If, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Focus on the competition for just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I can see that in the coming in the future. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So much fun is happening. <laughs> oh, well, I think I don't, Chris, do you have any other questions? Um, is there anything you would like to promote and Instagram oh, yeah. and YouTube if you teach online classes? Anything for people to find you? Um, I think I think just um, yeah, I mean I teach heels at Boston Pole Fitness on Saturdays. And you or everyone is welcome to come with heels or with 
imaginary heels. You can bring your, <laughs> you can do your thing. Um, that's the that's the only like drop in class that I'm teaching right now. I'm not teaching online at this moment. Um, I guess. I guess my Isabel Champagne is the best, is my IG handle. That's probably the best one. It's a private account for a reason. But if I know that someone is 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 a poll supporter and in the community, I'm I accept <laughs> followers yeah. just as you know, as many of us know, we have to navigate our different our different life aspects of our life. So but I think that's the if you're interested in my poll world, that's the one. Nice. Awesome. And then maybe in the future, you'll teach tra- a traveling work Pilates workshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, would, I, would, I would totally, I think, I think, when, at, I guess after the competition, right? But I, I would totally love, I think it's really fun to share stuff with new, with new students and it, it gives you new perspectives into your, into your own teaching and your own theory. So that sounds like really exciting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and hopefully on a Saturday I can make it down and take your class. I always yeah. see how much fun it is on Instagram and wish list. <laughs> we do, we do have a good time. That was right. That was one thing, one of your questions about like philosophy. And I think my um I often tell students, I want you to feel like you had a workout and went to a party. Like when you when you leave my class, if you feel something like that, that's that's what I'm trying to offer. <laughs> I love that you said that because like I, I, you know we ask everyone that and I, I was often thinking about my own philosophy but I think like I want to borrow your philosophy because I, I feel like that's my class too. I love that. <laughs> yeah because you I mean there's something you want to get from it but I, I think it's just important to leave really um, elevated and feeling like you connected with those around you and you connected with music and all the all the good things that can happen at good parties <laughs> yes I love it right <laughs> like we could all need a party like during the week twice a week <laughs> right like just an hour-long party hour. you yeah. put you on your your party shoes and <laughs> yes <laughs> right your special outfit that you like planned exactly. all week <laughs> I love it <laughs> Oh, well, this is so much fun. Thank you. Thank you for sharing everything with us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's great to meet you, Chris. It's so nice to meet you as well. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Well, so, I guess we should we should sign out. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's time for us to go walking somewhere else. Oh, yeah, that's too. new my <laughs> Well, my name is Mandy Mack. <laughs> I am Chris Rivers. I love those heels. We are here with Liz Aranco, and we are pull on the call, and we are standing up. Standing up. Get in a workout, too. <laughs> right. I love those heels. Nine inches. Oh, right? Nine inches. <laughs> we'll, see if I'm still, we'll see if I'm still in nine by the time November gets here. That's just the goal. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. going to be awesome in them. It's going to be great. Thank you so much. <laughs>